the company what is mentioned here uh, they have made few investments and uh, those investments are financed by um, <clears throat> debts long term debts and cash uh, they have also sold their uh, some of their uh, fixed assets so that is the information about what kind of activities anyone what kind of activities invested into fixed assets and raised fund to support that through debt and then sold also their uh, <clears throat> fixed assets so what kind of activities there we have discussed three activities right did you get the slides have i shared the slides with you the cash flow statement and uh, uh, slides on that Ha, Deepin. Ma'am, the taking the long term debt is cash flow from financial activities and mm. buying fixed asset and selling fixed assets are cash flow from investing. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I mean, did you get the cash flow uh, PPT that I I discussed last day? Actually, I didn't check. Okay. So others, have you checked? Okay, just check and let me know. Hmm. Fine. So those kind of those are all about the financing and investment activity. The next is the because the net income um, was the highest in the company's history. Hmm. So this example is just to give you an idea about how we prepare and interpret the cash flow statement. Huh? This is a very sh um, short example. One short example. So here. <coughs> maybe this particular um, company may not be a startup because they have a history and this is the highest so net profit is very good but we was partlets because the company is extremely low cash balance so if you see you will find that uh, just go to the income statement you will find that the net income is here it is mentioned four dollar and retained earnings is also good but at the same time if you look at the cash balance uh, there is a decrease huge decrease so <clears throat> 19 dollar decrease so what is happening when you are um, uh, making profit but there is a you are losing out cash so what actually is happening where is the problem is there any problem that you that is why he is perplexed and that is what you can identify by preparing a cash flow statement because by preparing the cash flow statement only you will have an understanding of how you are actually utilizing uh, that cash i mean over the years why there is a major drop in the cash balance even if there is a profit right so you have uh, understood that there can be a distinct difference between the profit and the liquidity status of the company and to make it more clear you need to prepare a cash flow statement cash flow statement helps us in identifying the activities in a proper manner okay so that's why here it is uh, first to prepare the cash flows and what it revealed by the statement of cash flows and how it helps uh, someone to explain that what has happened okay so let's start with how to do it hmm. so what is going to be the starting point for the for preparing cash flow statement uh, yes, upper. Uh, Ma'am, can you please uh, share the material again? Uh, I can't find it on in the files. Okay, I will see. Uh, today I will just um, uh, discuss few more slides and together I will share. Hmm? Um, if you would share just one of your screens, either the question paper or the slides, so it becomes Slide easier to understand. Showing because I think question paper all of you have. So I'm showing sure. the, showing last day's uh, PPT.
Uh, so what is going to be the starting point? I'm sharing in between. Uh, how to prepare the investment activity? Uh, can you see now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start with the operating cash flow. Okay. Yes, so we will do it with indirect yes. method, right? Huh? Uh, indirect method, always indirect method. So just tell me in operating cash flow, what cash flow we uh, consider? Which cash flows we consider in operating cash flow? Uh, I, cash flow from operations like current asset change, current liabilities change. Uh, so we consider this cash flow from operations huh? so you just need to remember that two two uh, uh, <clears throat> terms here one is the cash flow so that means all cash expenses and income and on the other hand is it operating so it should be operating in nature so no non-operating income or expenses even if it is in cash we will not consider in 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 this activity and no non-cash items, since it is cash flow from operations, we will not consider in cash flow from operations. So no non-operating, even if in cash, and no non-cash, even if it is operating. So these two, we will exclude. <clears throat> and we will not consider it in this particular cash flow from operations activity. So now just answer me, if it is cash in nature, but non-operating, where it will go? Should it come in the cash flow statement? Non-operating, yes, but cash. So where it will go? I'm in mean the other two parts. Yeah, either yes. in investment activity or in financing activity. But if it is non-cash, but operating, where it will go? In the balance sheet. Yes, yeah, so it will ne never come in the cash flow statement because it is non-cash. And if it is non-cash, non-operating, then also it will know. So if it is non-cash, nowhere it will come in the cash flow statement. But if it is cash but non-operating, it will come in the other under other activities, but it will never come in the operating cash flow. <clears throat> okay. So what is going to be the starting point here? Net income. We can start from there. Okay. So net profit. So what is net profit you will consider? Here, net profit you just four see was even, I think. You just see the open the um, question. I will I will share with you the solution later. First, you submit your um, assignment, and then I will share. Tomorrow I will share, okay? Because your deadline for submission is tonight, I think. So the first, if you if you look at the income statement, hmm, so what you will consider as your net profit. See, it starts with sales, then all kinds of manufacturing expenses, which gives you gross profit, then all kinds of other expenses, which gives you net profit. And then uh, to get the retained earnings balance of the end of the year, what you have done here is the beginning year's retained earnings balance. You have added it with net income and out of this total, this year's net income plus uh, till last year's retained earnings, what, what is the amount that as dividend you have distributed? You reducted that and you have got the retained earnings balance at the end of the year. So this way, this income statement is presented. So out of that, which figure to consider for determining cash flow from operations? Net profit. Huh, so what is the figure? Four. Four, okay. So here net profit is for the year. So we are considering. <clears throat> just uh, <clears throat> look at the heading of the income statement and the balance sheet. The heading of the income statement, what it is showing income statement and changes in retained earnings for the year for the year ended December 31. So it is for a particular year. But in the heading of balance sheet, it is balance sheet as on or as of December 31. So that means as on December 31, what is the status of the 
assertion liabilities so it is not for a particular year it is at the end of the year what is the uh, i mean um, <clears throat> values of these assets and liabilities and that is that balance sheet is showing so since it is for the year and similarly for cash flow statement also when we will prepare cash flow statement it is going to be cash flow for the year cash flow statement for the year for a particular year so if you look at the retained earnings 31st december balance it has beginning years retained earnings it has this year's net profit and from that whatever dividend you have distributed right so it is not giving you the retained earnings closing balance is not giving you what it is not giving you the profit for the year huh? or the source of cash flow for the year right so what we uh, <clears throat> okay so i am coming into the letter so so that's why divyam has told that we should start with the net profit for the year why because from the net profit we are interested in finding out the cash profit and for that we need to adjust all the non cash and non operating items right so the starting point is net profit that is 4 then the uh, divyam you, you can also say any anyone else who wants to try just do it on your own so that you can understand <clears throat> anyone other than divyam Okay, then Divya, you please um, uh, tell us what to do next. What to adjust? Then we have to adjust depreciation. Yes. Why? Because we have uh, reduced it, but there is no cash flow there. Yes, so it's a non-cash item. Cash. So non-cash item, we need to add it back. So see, first, uh, it is uh, easy to first think of. excluding the non cash items because anyhow anywhere of the cash flow statement it is not going to come so first after uh, when you are starting with net profit first you exclude all non cash items that is very easy to identify so just pick up the non cash items it is it may be depreciation it may be amortization and you just add it back to your net profit to get the cash profit so here you are uh, adding the depreciation uh, eight right okay so next next you can if you just look at the slides what i have shared huh, here i have only mentioned about the working capital adjustments that is current asset current liability adjustments and depreciation is not mentioned here but don't get confused the non cash items also i will increase one more row here one cash um, non cash items also we will uh, <clears throat> just like depreciation and others Uh, we will adjust to get the cash flow from operating activities so once your non cash items have ident are identified so then next what to do you can follow the slides and you can tell me uh excuse me ma'am yes uh ma'am didn't understand one thing so the net income is given to us hmm uh according to the side we can go by the live uh, why are we can you ex again explain why are we going through this profit thing so net uh, net profit is same uh, yes ma'am so we can add a uh, uh, increase in current liabilities according to the slide if we go by the slide mm -hmm. and then find the cfo right oh na but no, i mean it is not Uh, mentioned here that's why i told that i will add one row here here only the working capital adjustments with the net profit to get the cash profit uh, is shown huh? but uh, other non cash items like depreciation amortization it is not mentioned here huh? i will mention yeah, okay okay yeah. huh? i will mention it here only the working current asset and current liability real, related adjustments are shown here huh? so i will include uh, these two one is the non cash and one is a non operating huh? those also i will include just you remember that i mean those two adjustments apart from what is shown in the slides are also there okay 
non cash and non operating if any so after depreciation just you can just look at the slide and you can tell me uh, you only tell me uh, uh, tell us per, uh, per that what will be the next adjustment ma'am we'll add the increase in current liability uh -huh. Hmm. You can also start with decreasing current asset, but increasing current liability. Whatever there, there, there may not be any. I mean, sequence you need to follow. Hmm. Just the way it is followed here, it. I mean, there is no uh, necessity to follow the same sequence. Okay, okay. So uh, uh, liability. Okay. So just uh, look at the question and then tell me that uh, what is what you are going to adjust here. Okay, so yes, so just let us know that what are the current liability items you have found? Mm, account payable for merchandise yes. have increased by twenty five. Yes. So since it is increased, what you will do? You will add, right? Add. Huh. Any any more um, uh, um, liabilities? Current liabilities? Mom, taxes are current liability, right? Yes. 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 Huh. Accrued property that, tax payable increased by that is also payables. That is, you need to pay it within a short span of time that you have not yet paid. So that will go to your current liability. And since it is an increase, right? So you will add it. Hmm? Okay, with the net income. Okay, thank you. So what about then? Then what next? So you have added the depreciation. You have added the accounts payable. And the tax payables, right? What next? Any more uh, current liability you are finding here in incomes in income statement in balance sheet? No. So there is a long term debt which is not a current liability, right? There is a capital stock. What do we mean by capital stock? It is another term used. It is equity. Hmm? Nothing uh, but an equity. So capital stock means equity. So it is a Stock means shares, capital, share capital. We term it as share capital. There, it is mostly termed as in Western countries stock. So capital stock, which is different from your inventory stock. So <clears throat> that is remaining the same. And since it is also not short term, so there is no question of uh, considering it in operating uh, cash flow adjustments. Okay. So what else? Anything else? No. So from uh, next, where uh, how where we will go? With statement uh, and with as asset side. So um, anyone else for current asset adjustments? Ah, huh, Divya, yes. Um, for current asset, the inventory. Has increased. Hmm. Inventory has increased. So what you will do? <coughs> Decrease it in the cash flow. So um, what is the um, amount of increase in inventory? Thirty-one. Thirty-one. So you will decrease. You will deduct it, right? Thirty-one. You will deduct. Yes. Increase in current assets. So you need to deduct it. What is the what? What are the other current assets you will consider here? Uh, accounts receivable has also increased for us. Accounts receivable. So again, you will deduct. Hmm. Yes, ma'am. Minus fifteen. Okay. Anything else? And there are prepaid expenses as well. Hmm hmm hmm. So we have like increased that. Also that we have well. deduct because everywhere there is an increase in current asset, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. So all these three current assets, receivables, inventory, and prepaid expenses, all these three you are going to deduct, okay, to get the cash profit. Anything else in the current asset? No, right? Because the rest item is the fixed asset. So nothing. So when we are doing the, it is called working capital adjustments. It is going to come in your um, valuation uh, when you are doing when you are going to do uh, the valuation of a company. 
then again this concept will be required this cash flows uh, i mean how you get the, because you remember i uh, i told you that uh, the free cash flow from where the value of a company uh, is generated uh, the driver of the value of a company is the free cash flow so for calculation of that free cash flow you need to understand that where from what is the source of that free cash flow it, is, it starts from revenue then comes net profit then comes this working capital adjustments that means this working capital you are keeping aside and then whatever cash flow is left that is only you can uh, it can be utilized right so in free cash flow calculation again the same uh, i mean you need to revise all these so just remember all these current asset and current liability adjustments are called working capital adjustments so uh, <clears throat> all about the working capital adjustments are done current liabilities and current assets and uh, what is left is the fixed assets so as i said that for your uh, operating cash flow where you will uh, you need to look for it is net profit income statement then all the working capital adjustments you will get from your current asset and current liability side of the balance sheet <coughs> okay so that is also done anything else anything else what we have not yet considered anyone because we are interested in cash flow from operations okay so anything else you think that we are we need to consider here it needs to be adjusted depreciation we have adjusted other uh, current assets current liabilities we have adjusted anything else left left out Okay, upper, you think? Can you think of any other item, upper or divyam? Because others are um, silent. I do not know whether they are here or not. But <clears throat> no, are missing out? No, ma'am. No, ma According to what you explained in the starting, I don't think any other. No, I mean just uh, remember that we are also interested in um, since operating cash flow. Huh, as I told that both. Cash flow and operating, uh, both this nature of item is required. So there may be, and we are what we are doing. We have started with net profit. So we are adjusting all other non-operating and non-cash flow items to get the cash profit, right? Operating cash flow means cash profit, which is operating in nature. So if you look at the income statement, any non non-cash items we have excluded so far. But non-operating items, anything is there? What is that? Any non-operating item you are finding? Because again, remember, we are starting with net profit. It is not the direct method that only the cash expenses, cash revenues. We need to exclude an in. We need to exclude anything which is non-operating and non-cash. So. Are you finding any non-cash or non-operating anything? Non-cash, though we have already adjusted depreciation. Anything in non-operating nature? No inventory. Inventory, though it is taken care of by the current assets. Differences in current assets. Anything which is given in the income statement. <clears throat> Divam, you also can uh, try to answer.
I'm asking about non-operating. Interest expense is something. Yes, interest expense. So interest expense is not operation, operating, right? Yes. So you need to think very carefully. Why interest expense we, we do not consider in operating? Because whatever may be our efficiency level of operations, it has nothing to do with interest. It is totally a financing policy that how much debt we are going to raise or how much debt level we are maintaining that determines what should be our interest expense right it has nothing to do with our operating efficiency and that's why if we include it in our cash flow from operations it will not give a proper meaning right so it is not going to contribute to our operating efficiency so better to since it is a completely uh, financing activity so let us separate it out from our operations right so now if we do not if you if you if you don't want to consider it here so what i need to do what to do with interest expense how much it is and what to do with that we want to exclude it so what we will do subtract it is already subtracted right to get the net profit and we are our starting point is net profit so what we will do to exclude it we'll add it back add it back. okay because we are interested in cash profit so we are starting with net profit we will add it back to get the cash profit so we have added depreciation for since it is non cash we have added interest since it is maybe in cash but non operating and we have made the working capital adjustments increase in current assets we have deducted and increase in current liabilities we have added so can any of you i mean tell me what is the cash flow from operations coming um, 56 56 or only 6 it is minus six coming out to minus six yes yes <clears throat> minus six okay so just um, i mean who said 56 you just check okay so it is net profit plus depreciation plus interest minus accounts receivables and inventory and prepaid expenses and plus accounts payables and tax payables okay so this is what we have discussed so far so your net cash flow from operations, finally it is coming negative. So you remember um, what was the uh, <clears throat> confusion in the mind of the um, uh, founder, owner, that there is a, I mean, highest profit in that particular year, what they have experienced, but the cash flow from operations, now you can see that it is coming negative. Uh, so there is a huge difference between the status of the liquidity and profitability. Now let's move uh, to the investing activity. So investing activity where we will go to find it out. Balance sheet and fixed asset changes and all. I'm showing you the slides. I think that will be easier for you. Investing activity non-current asset side of the balance sheet fine nowhere you will find um, uh, nowhere else you will find the investment activities so only in the long-term assets changes in the long-term assets that gives you the status of the investment activity okay so what will be <clears throat> the investment act just go to the balance sheet and you will have the idea what will be the investment activity
see here at the top of the <clears throat> statements it is mentioned right the purchase and sales information about the fixed assets did you find it at the top of the financial statements what is the purchase and sales yes ma'am so you can also straight um, consider it from there because in case of you need to find it out from your balance sheet so there you need to do the adjustments uh, of depreciation hmm? so better since it is already given that for that particular year you need not to calculate the differences what is the purchase and what is the sales both the 54 and the 5 it is already given hmm? so you can directly take it from there okay so 54 is your um purchase so that means it is what you will do 54 minus or plus in investment activity minus 54 minus because you are following the direct method here hmm yes ma'am okay and you have sold <coughs> uh in old assets so plus 5 old assets in 5 million hmm cash so that is your positive okay anything else in investment activity so in the asset side fixed asset side of the balance sheet anything else is there and in the additional information anything else is there regarding your fixed assets no ma'am no okay so what is your investment activity cash flow divyam minus 49 minus 49 so we have a huge <coughs> negative investment activity cash flow negative cash negative cash flow from investing which is minus 49 so remember your negative cash flow from operations minus 6 your negative investment cash flows minus 49 so already so much amount it is uh, coming negative for both your operations and investing okay okay next coming to the <clears throat> financing activity there is no more invest investment activity left so let's consider the financing activity so where we will look for the financing activity items where we need to look the, at in the balance sheet like liability section yes so balance sheet liability side both equity and liability apart from the current liabilities right yes, <clears throat> in the long term fund raised both in terms of equity and long term debts hmm? okay so these are about the sources of finance sources of funds and what can what will be the usage of those funds that will, that also we will see so go to the balance sheet liability side so what you are finding here we have taken a long term debt hmm so what will you do it is the amount With is increase increase so that means cash is coming in so plus plus 40 hmm yes, okay then then what else we have also paid dividends this year one okay so for debt it is plus 40 for equity equity raised nothing because 70 was there in the previous year here also it is showing 70 okay that means the net figure is zero fine <clears throat> so now coming to the this, this is the sources of fund cash flow coming in positive cash flow now anything whether we have paid so first what you told uh, divyam what is that dividend, dividend right dividend Yes. Okay, so how we are going to uh, get the dividend? Here it is mentioned, right? How much it is? One. One. So now my question is: Say, for example, um, this <coughs> one is not given to you. 
how you are going to calculate what, how, what is dividend? Any idea, Divyam? Just by looking at your income statement and balance sheet. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, annual like, from the net income and uh, that retained earnings, we can figure yes. out what dividend is paid. Yes, so the point is just a minute. Uh, so Divyam, please explain uh, uh, how to get the one uh, dividend. One dollar yes, dividend. The example, dividend is not specifically see. mentioned. Huh? So from just uh, from the the example credit. also we can get if one was not mentioned. Like because for the net income here is four dollar, hmm. and uh, you can see that retained earning has changed from seven to ten. So like retained earning have increased by three. Mm -hmm. What we need to do is net income minus change of return. Yes, so that means why this net profit entire four is not showing in our changes in retained earnings. It should be if the entire net profit we consider in the retained earnings, but it is showing lesser three. So that means one dollar definitely we have distributed is as dividend. Okay, because the retained earnings is the term retained because whatever earnings is retained after distribution of dividend from the net profit. So that is why there's a difference between $4 net profit and the difference between two years retained earnings, which is showing three in balance sheet. It should have been shown four, but since we have distributed $1 as dividend, that's why it is showing three. Okay. Okay, so that is one. Another financing activity, anything else? Anything else in financing activity? <clears throat> it is easy actually to think of. So whenever we are doing financing activity, you just <clears throat> Think of that there can be a financing activity related to debt, a financing activity related to equity. So if it is something related to equity, either it is an increase or decrease in the share capital, or it is an increase or de um, decrease due to payment dividend, right? Similarly, if it is about debt, either it is an increase or decrease in the debt level, or it is debt related payment, which is interest, right? So you just segregate what are the financing activities. If it is debt, it can be increase or decrease of the debt level and related to it is interest, which is cost to the company. Interest and dividend, when, you will, when we will um, do the chapter on cost of capital, you will see interest and dividend is the cost for raising the capital, right? So those, are the, those are called cost of capital. So, Interest for interest, which is cost of debt capital, dividend, which is cost of equity capital. Okay, so these are the cost for the company, but these are the returns to your debt holders. Interest is returned to the debt holders, and um, uh, dividend is returned to the shareholders. Fine. So we have done, we have checked the equity capital, no change related to the, the cost of equity, dividend. There is a one dollar dividend of, regarding yeah, the debt. There is an increase in debt, the cost of debt, which is interest that we have not considered so far, right? Yes. Minus three will consider here. Yes. <clears throat> so taking all in consideration, what is the cash from financing activity? Uh, Thirty six. Thirty six positive, right? Yes. OK. So now, so that's why there's a drop in because there's a minus six operating activity cash flow. 
minus 49 investing cash flow plus 36 financing cash flow right so the net effect is a negative that means negative cash flow there is a positive profit which is actually the highest in the history of the company but there is a negative cash flow now we have analyzed what are the reasons for that negative cash flow and we have found there's a negative investing activity good even negative operating cash flows and these are so huge that it is not able to compensate the and the cash flow from financing activity even it is positive it is not going to compensate the negativity of the operating and in investment activities now what is going to be your interpretation by looking at the cash flow statement and they have heavily invested this year mm -hmm. so that's why first of, all, to, first of all you need to say that whether you are burning cash or building cash right yes they are burning, burning yes so they are burning they are burning cash because their investing and operating activities taking together it is coming negative okay so then <clears throat> then give them yes ma'am and then they also invested huge in different assets as well mm -hmm. so cfi is negative so given that there's a highest profit incurred in that particular year and looking at the current situation of the cash flow so first of all what is your understanding and then what suggestions you are giving these two things just try to try to answer anyone not only give them i'm asking anyone always remember that your profit is coming <clears throat> so where is the problem is there any problem first of all uh, let me know and one problem that i feel uh, is about accounts payable and read uh, accounts receivable okay so let's discuss one by one first of all let's discuss about the investing activity are you finding any problem here no ma'am why i feel like purchase of fixed asset like because we don't know what stage of the company this is so yes. Purchasing assets is a good thing, I would say. Yes. <clears throat> so that means just looking at the investing activity, we cannot comment, right? Whether it is good or bad. Now they are making huge investment. That is actually good. As I told, that investment means you have found the opportunity to invest. That's why you are investing, right? Now going to the your. <clears throat> Operating cash flow. So, what you are saying about receivables, Divya? Well, receivables have increased this year hmm. by very higher margin. Hmm. So, that and could be a troublesome thing. Yes. Or? Yes, no, I'm asking anything else. Receivables has increased, and that, that too, I mean, $15 by $15, right? And anything else, the, the sources of negative cash flow from operations, now it is very clear in front of you. I think that is the reason why accounts payable have also increased because we didn't receive money, that's why we didn't pay. Yes, so say there is a collection problem, right? Yes. Also, if you look at the inventory level, <clears throat> it is negative 31 increase. Yes, ma'am. So it is huge, right? Yes, yes. yes. Prepaid expenses is fine. Two dollar increase, and that too, it is related to our future. I mean, it is because of the matching principle, maybe. Fine, it will be recovered. The services or goods, whatever. But inventory level has increased huge. The accounts receivable has increased. What about the sales? If you if you just look at the income statement. <coughs> What about the sales uh, growth? Oh, sales growth has not shown to you. 
not been given okay. only 100 but increase. since there is an increase in net profit this time we can uh, if, if, if we can assume that there is an increase in sales but that increase in sales for increasing that sales level you are allowing your receivables to increase this much right so there is a problem even if you are making profit your cash is getting blocked and if it is a new company so you can understand that just to ensure some revenue you are getting your cash blocked means you will be under liquidity constraint which you cannot afford as a new company right <clears throat> Okay, sorry. So the problem is in your current asset. It is the current asset you are building, which is actually. And what about the inventory? So, in anticipation of having a good amount of uh, revenues and good amount of sales, you are just keeping, I mean, you are building your inventory, right? So, a huge amount of liquidity is getting blocked in the inventory. So you may say that yes, later on, I mean, my sales will grow because I'm allowing this much of, uh, I mean, um, I'm, I'm delaying my collections from my customers and this amount of receivables and this amount of inventories are either, actually it is helping my operations to run smoothly and uh, in anticipation of more and more sales growth in future. But at the same time, you need to understand that boosting profit is not only your motto and especially for the new ventures. So you need to take care of your liquidity also. And because of these inventories and receivables, actually your operating cash flow is coming negative. Now, given the situation, what you are doing, you are making again huge investments. So already when your cash flow is under strain and you are making a huge investment, so you do not have money, you are burning in the cash. So now what do you have thought of that? OK, let me handle my um, revenue situation, my op operating situation this way and let me also invest money. I will raise funds from outside. OK, by looking at your profit, maybe uh, uh, people are giving you money. But what is the mode of your raising that finance? The mode is what you have considered is debt, right? And a huge debt you have, the debt level has increased in a huge manner. So once your date has increased, see, <clears throat> once your date has increased, that means you need to bear the interest. Your interest expense will increase. Now already your operating situation is not good. Then again, you are just raising debt and you are increasing that in interest expense. Hmm? So the problem is not in your investment. The problem is not in your uh, raising fund through debt level because already you have 70 um, I mean equity capital so uh, taking 40 uh, debts means the capital structure is not either equity buyers or debt buyers right so it has a balance I understand but given the operating situation operating cash flow situation you need to think of that whether even after you are making highest profit this year whether you are going to the right direction or you need to have control somewhere otherwise it will happen like you will keep burning your cash and you will keep raising fund and ultimately you will be in a loop debt loop right and for uh, i mean looking for more profit you are actually compromising your liquidity which you cannot afford for a long point of time so these activities actually help you these analysis this cash flow statement preparation actually helps you to analyze what are the sources? What are the strengths and what are the weaknesses you have? And for that, 
what are the kinds of i mean policies you are following financial policies and what can be suggested okay so this is about the <clears throat> what is this cash flow statement what the cash flow statement reveals the first question right and what about the what is uh, will it help me to um, mr bareta understand what has happened so if i say that what will be your suggestion so what will be your suggestion divyam you have uh, answered from the beginning so can you tell me in one or two lines what will be the suggestions from this point yes ma'am ah uh. then you should focus more on like rather than on sales you should also focus on uh, first of all inventory turnover as well because a lot of inventory has increased this year and also one more thing is taking back the money and not giving everything on accounts uh, receivable mm hmm hmm so in that way maybe you will play complete conservative by not giving that much of liberty to your customers maybe your revenue will not grow that <coughs> fast that fast or your profit you will not be able to make but at least you will be you will play safe right you will be in a better position so far as your i mean the risk you, your risk will not increase here your risk since your liquidity is under strain so your risk is increasing and again you for i mean another um, source of risk is increasing the debt level so now everything is anticipation of future uh, <clears throat> revenue flow but if sometimes due to any just remember about this pandemic if any unforeseen thing happens and your revenue gets stopped then you will be in a high debt loop and that happened actually with most of the small businesses in anticipation of the futures whatever they have um their receivables and everything it has i mean there are working capital issues that have come up and also because i mean uh, to uh, fund those and they have made investments and to fund those they have raised debts because equity that you do not raise um, uh, every year right so after reaching a point you have uh, uh, <clears throat> raised your debt level and when there is a stop in the revenue and profit then everything goes against you right so that uh, having that liquidity is very very important having the cash holding how much cash you have whether that cash you have for a certain say for 6 months what is my runway what is my cash holding given that constant i will then beyond that if i uh, can achieve more cash that is good and but that minimum cash level at, at least i need to maintain okay with my own generated um, fund not by taking fund from outside that is very important especially for the new ventures when we will do short term cash plannings long term cash plannings long term planning short term plannings then again we will understand that how to um, uh, <clears throat> every month you need to make a plan for that but this is for your understanding that uh, the how cash flow statement helps us in revealing your um <clears throat> liquidity status okay so i think i have um, explained it um now i have also uh, just mentioned in your those venture screening indicators Uh, about the cash flow break even you remember that how first you reach the cash flow break even if you put it in a scale that is also one evaluating factor for new venture screening hmm? so we are uh, very briefly we are going to discuss here the cash flow break even which is also termed as survival break even so what is that we know about break even which is revenue is equal to cost so that there is a no profit no loss situation so here um <clears throat> we are more interested in cash flow break even why because as i said for new ventures cash flow is far far more important than the established ones <clears throat> so just um, how we do that 
So for break-even analysis, when we say that there's a revenue and expenses, so that expenses we can segregate, you all know that two parts, variable expenses, which directly varies with revenues, which is mostly the cost of manufacturing and fixed expenses that remain constant, those periodic expenses in the income statement, administrative expenses, marketing expenses, all these. And here by, uh, <clears throat> What is EBITDA earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization? That is profit, but it is before interest tax and depreciation and amortization. Okay, that means since we are interested in cash, cash flow, so that's why depreciation and amortization we are excluding. Okay. Now, for survival break even analysis or cash flow break even analysis, what we are doing here is we are considering, we are saying it EBDAT break even. Then what is EBDAT? It is earnings before depreciation, amortization, and tax. EBDAT. But here, see in the, in the last slide, it is EBITDA. So interest term is what it is missing here. Why? Because interest is, even it is non operating, but it is cash in nature. So we are interested in cash earnings. So here it is EBDAT, earnings before depreciation, amortization and taxes, but after interest. So you got it. It is after interest since it is interest is a cash expense, but it is before depreciation, amortization and taxes since it is cash flow break even. So <clears throat> what is EBDAT break even or survival break even or cash flow break even? Amount of revenues needed to cover cash operating expenses. So cash flow break even occurs when cash flow at zero for a specific period or EBDAT equal to zero. Okay. So generally we uh, say that no profit, no loss. That means profit equal to zero. So here by profit, we are meaning cash profit, which is EBDAT. Now how to calculate it? Say for example, if, if a particular uh, organization's three years income statement is given to you, year one, year two, year three, number of units sold, then the total revenue, then cost of goods sold. This gives you gross profit, then administrative and marketing expense. This gives you um, EBITDA, operating profit, then there from your depreciation, your less depreciation, EBIT. Uh, there from you uh, deduct the interest expense, you get the profit before tax. There from you uh, deduct the tax and you get the net profit, right? Now, <clears throat> cost of goods sold, is considered as the variable cost and destroying 65% of revenues. Okay, now go to the next slide. So from here, if you want to calculate the EBDAT, which is cash earnings, I should say. So what to do? We will just consider the earnings before depreciation and amortization, but after interest. So here you see what we are doing. From revenue, again, the variable cost you are deducting, you are getting gross profit. From there, the fixed expenses you are deducting, fixed periodic expenses, administrative and marketing. And from that, you are also deducting the interest. But this time, you are not deducting the depreciation and amortization since we are interested in cash flow break even. And depreciation and amortization is non cash items, right? So, but interest is cash items so we are not considering tax depreciation and amortization tax is cash but still taxes depends on i mean what is your earnings coming on that tax is given so it is not a fixed expense in that sense so tax we are not considering right so what is there fixed expenses fixed periodic expenses and interest just compare it with the earlier slide depreciation Deduction of depreciation is not considered in the next slide. What we have deducted as an interest expense, that only we have considered here as interest expense. So it is same with the previous slide, but in the previous slide, depreciation was excluded, but this slide, depreciation is not excluded. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So as we know that no profit, no loss. So what is EBDAT? Revenue minus variable cost and cash fixed costs. So all your administrative, marketing and interests are your cash fixed cost, not depreciation. So depreciation is not mentioned here and only fixed cost we have not mentioned here. We have mentioned cash fixed cost. So what cash fixed cost includes? It includes both fixed operating 
and fixed financing cost. Fixed operating means general administrative and marketing and fixed financing cost means interest cost. So it is not activity wise we are considering the cash flow in nature, only those costs we are considering. So when EBDAT is zero, when your revenue is equal to cost, revenue and your variable cost plus cash fixed cost, that is that is going to give you the EBDAT break even or cash break even or survival break even. <clears throat> Next, just look at the slides, go through it. Okay, <clears throat> so if we present it in a different manner, survival break even is equal to <clears throat> that revenue, which is which we call EBTAT equal to VC plus CFC, variable cost plus cash fixed cost, just from the last slide. Now, if we put it like this way, keeping cash fixed cost on the left side and taking the rest. <clears throat> On the right side. So what it is coming? Survival revenue minus variable cost. And if that variable cost, the total variable cost, we present it like unit variable cost and the revenue volume. So what it will be? Percentage of that is just this in this uh, slide. Just see, 65% of revenue is your cost of goods sold. That means you are presenting it as a percentage of revenue. So if you present it this way. So your variable cost is nothing but your uh, <clears throat> variable cost revenue ratio into the revenue, right? And if you uh, take the uh, revenue outside, so it is coming survival revenue into one minus VCRR, that is variable cost revenue ratio. So what is the survival revenue? That is cash fixed cost divided by one minus variable cost revenue ratio. So this one minus VCRR is called the contribution profit margin. OK, so this is called contribution profit margin. So what is the formula at the end of the exercise? Survival revenue is cash fixed cost divided by the contribution profit margin. <clears throat> so what do we mean by contribution profit margin? Contribution profit margin, why it is called contribution profit margin? Because the more and more revenue you have, the more and more sales you have, your contribution will increase and you will be um, able to compensate your fixed cost faster, right? The more and more revenue increases, the contribution, because it is a variable cost, so the contribution will be higher. And because cash fixed cost is fixed, so the difference between this contribution and fixed cost will increase. Because even if the revenue goes up, your contribution will go up, but your fixed cost will remain fixed. The more and more you have contribution margin, the faster you will be able to compensate or recover your fixed cost, right? And the faster you will um, reach the break even. That is the concept. So now this is a uh, example given. So from this example, can you tell us um, what is the survival revenue? And we need to like figure out first what are the variable expenses. Yes, yes, yes. Expenses. please do that. <clears throat> just tell me you need not to. I mean, I will show you just in the next slide. Just tell me what do you think?
I think one million and fifty thousand. Uh, you just first tell me that what are the <coughs> cash fixed cost here? And what is administrative expense? Yes, this is our, the cash fixed cost. Administrative expense, then only administrative expense. Marketing expense. Yes, so administrative and marketing. Marketing expense. Not come if, since it is cash, uh, non cash. Hmm. Anything else? Administrative and marketing, and anything else? What about interest expense? Administrative is ruled out. Administrative is fixed expense. Marketing is fixed ex, uh, cash, fixed ex cost. Depreciation is ruled out. So this is non cash. What about interest? Interest we need to consider. Consider, right? Because it is cash fixed cost again. So yes. tax we are not going to consider. So there's a three cash fixed cost administrative plus marketing plus interest, right? And what is your VCRR, mm -hmm. variable cost revenue ratio? Variable cost is also given to you. Revenue is also given to you. Just you need to do the ratio. So what it is? What is the variable cost? Uh, cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, right? And revenue is given, so it is 65%. So just have a look at this slide. Uh, <coughs> so 0.65 is your variable cost ratio. Cash fixed cost is coming 4 lakhs. So your survival revenue is uh, 1 lakh, uh, 11 uh, lakhs, 43,000, right? So this is your survival revenue. And if you put it like this way, survival revenue minus 65% of that is coming on gross profit. So it is exactly the summation of your fixed expenses and your um, EBDAT is coming zero. No profit, no loss, no cash profit, no loss. So this is the, and if you put it in, uh, in and put it graphically, so this is the, way we are going to present. So <clears throat> you need to, as I again, I'm repeating that for new ventures, general cash flow, general uh, break even is important, but cash flow break even is even more important. You have just seen by preparing that particular cash flow statement that cash is how much it is important for the new ventures, right? Because you are in a growth phase, because Still, you need to bear a huge, I mean, it is expected that you will burn your cash at the beginning. You are expected to, uh, I mean, <clears throat> um, uh, keeping your building, your inventory receivables, everything. But when you have reached a certain profit level, when you are claiming that this is your highest profit, then if you are under cash constraint, then what is going to be your future, right? So, your target is not only to reach the break even, but to reach the cash flow break even as first as possible, right? Because beyond that point, you can afford to, I mean, whatever revenue you are going to generate, that will be cash in nature. You can think of, I mean, reaching a point from then onward, you are not only making profit, you are whatever you are making, it is cash in nature. Okay, so it is you, are, you will be able to cover up all your cash um, <clears throat> expenses. At what um, point of revenue you are going to reach that position. So that's why it is called survival. Hmm? So cash actually tells us whether you are going to survive or not. You remember when we discussed, when we described the life cycle phase of business, we mentioned that there's a development stage. After that, there's a startup stage. After that, there's a survival stage. And then there is a rapid growth stage. So what do we mean by those terms? Development stage means no expectation of profit, no expectation even of revenue. Startup stage means starting of your revenue. Okay. But still maybe it is negative in nature, your profit. Survival stage means it is just you have reached your break even and then whether you are able to reach that break even and you can go forward 
or actually you are not able to survive you are in a death trap that your survival stage will define and once you are able to go beyond that um, level then nobody is there to stop you need not to look back you only will grow and grow so that's why reaching cash flow break even is very important especially for the new ventures okay so now uh, let me just take a 2 to 3 minutes break and we will come back uh, with the next chapter and also <clears throat> next week you have the, you, you have the exam week right so yes. next week next week there will be only one class and that to the exam so is it uh, preferable to have the exam on monday because it is starting the class is the class starts from 11 and how long will it take it it will be one hour ma'am monday we already have two exams uh, so will it be possible to shift it next day used to also possible but i um, thought that maybe uh, monday will be since it is 11 you all prefer the late class than early morning class so that's why so anyway no, we already i already have two exams that's why we are talking okay so then i am keeping it on tuesday uh, from 9 to 10 okay not from okay. 8 to 9 because only that class we will have that exam will only happen next week no other classes <coughs> yes, okay okay so i am just uh, keeping it from 9 to 10 i will uh, again um, put the notice hmm? okay just take a 2 to 3 minutes break then uh, we will come back ma'am could you please schedule the test during class timings on ha ah, in class timings only that's why i'm saying so tuesday the class timing is from 8 to 10 so maybe the exam will be from 9 to 10 next okay. tuesday next tuesday thank you ma'am hmm.
Okay. <clears throat> so are you all back? Let's go to the next uh, chapter, which is very re related to the um, ones we discussed. So here, <clears throat> until now, we have discussed to get an understanding about the financial uh, health of your company, how uh, the financial statements help. So for that, you needed to learn the how different kinds of transactions uh, are recorded from the transactions, how to identify the accounts and how to record it in the financial statements. First, you need to understand the recording of those and then the interpretation, right? And for recording also, what do we mean by accounts? What are the different natures of accounts? and how these accounts follow the double entry system so that the accounting equation matches everything we had we uh, needed to learn right after that what is the recording of those accounts and how to interpret then our financial statements so these are the detailed uh, <clears throat> understanding of the financial basics what we have understood so far now um, Coming to the evaluation of the financial performance. The next step is the evaluation of the financial performance. So here if we look at what are the one of the ways to evaluate. See in case of uh, financial statements analysis. There we have found that there are uh, absolute uh, numbers given in the financial statements in income statement for that particular what is the performances how the companies perform what is their operational performances and in balance sheet what are the status of the assets and liabilities of the business at a particular point of time but when you are going to evaluate a performance say for example when your performance is evaluated or you yourself evaluate your own performance how you evaluate yourself Either you evaluate that in last term, last semester, how I have done and what is the trend you are getting this semester you have improved or not, or you evaluate yourself in comparison to your peers, right? In terms of comparison with the peers where you stand, whether you are doing better or not, that only defines how you will be positioning yourself in future, right? Similarly, for venture also, it is not absolute evaluation of your own performance. It is evaluation in comparison to some benchmark. So what is that benchmark? Either it is that company's own previous history of performance from there, the company has improved their position or not, or it is evaluation of their performance in comparison to their peers in the same industry what their competitors are doing or there is some kind of industry benchmark that you want to achieve just the way you want to achieve a particular CG. Similarly, the companies also want to achieve an industry standard, whether they're able to reach that standard, reach that benchmark or whether they're going to beat that benchmark. So that is another kind of evaluation that the companies or the investors do in comparison to the industry benchmark. If there is some kind of industry for that particular product or service and where the particular venture stands, right? So that cannot be done in absolute term because size wise the companies vary. Size wise means, I mean the asset size wise, the revenue size wise, the nature of the company is vary. So what do you do? What can be done? You can just um, calculate the ratios, different ratios, which is going to help you to understand where you stand in comparison to others. Say for example, gross margin. Why we are more interested in gross margin than absolute gross profit figure? Because with absolute gross profit figure, if you compare it with some others, then their revenue level, your revenue level are different. And if you just compare the absolute value, it does not make any meaning, right? Does not make sense. So what you can do? The gross margin will give you a better picture. So what is your gross margin? That tells that how much after covering up your variable expenses, what is the profit that is left to cover up your fixed expenses? And that gross margin in percentage, if you compare it with your peers or your own um, or industry or your own uh, previous uh, indicators, 
then it is going to give you the picture that whether you are in a better position to cover up your fixed expenses or not so far as the gross margin is concerned right so there comes the importance of financial ratios financial ratio is nothing but just just like the way we did the variable cost revenue ratio right whatever values absolute numbers we have just to convert it into ratios in different manner and whatever ratios we will discuss here not necessarily that you have to follow only those ratio for evaluation of the performance of the companies you can just play with different um, say for example if you want some um, uh, you are interested in particular marketing expenses say so what is the marketing expense percentage huh. you can calculate it on revenue on profit whatever and you can compare it with other companies marketing expenses right, or your own marketing expenses in previous years right, so whatever may be the n number of ratios you can think of and you can calculate and you can compare that is for your own analysis for investors also for any kind of fund providers there are standard ratios that they look for to understand the what is going on inside the business and stage wise also the importance of relevance of those financial ratios varied just have a look at this slide <clears throat> there are different stages mentioned development stage and startup stage as i say that either there is no revenue or revenue has just started to begin what kind of financing we get at that point of time seed seed financing startup financing just like uh, friends round and your um, angel round vc round something like this so there what are the kinds of ratios again if you just look at it you will find that who are the who are the um, uh, users of those financial ratios who are providing capital at that stage they are going to be the users only those stakeholders so who are those stakeholders at this stage entrepreneurs angels vcs as i mentioned uh just a minute okay <clears throat> so uh, again if you see if you look at those ratios and all cash burn rates liquidity ratios conversion period ratio so the emphasis is more on the cash the liquidity you see conversion period ratios i will be discussing later the liquidity is more important because the vcs know the angels know whoever is funding at that stage they know that they are uh, this is a burning cash stage hmm. and whatever cash they are a uh, giving those are getting burnt in the process of building the business but whether it this burning rate is uh, high or low or how they are managing cash how the liquidity position is improving over the time that is what they are more interested in or in comparison to the other investments that you are making in this that they are making in the same space how a particular venture they are investing is um doing in comparison to their peers where they are also investing that they evaluate okay it is definite that um, they are burning cash there are liquidity uh, difficulties at this stage but for that also related to that liquidity also whether they are gradually overcoming or they are doing better in comparison to the industry benchmark or peers that what the investors are interested in okay now when the when the question of survival stage is coming so there are other rounds of uh, other kinds of uh, financing that comes into the picture it is not only the private equity it is also the commercial banks since there is already a history of uh, revenue generation they also uh, come into the picture 
and so along with those liquidity ratios what what other ratios they are more interested in the uh, <coughs> solvency ratios so what is the solvency ratio so the whether the company will be remaining solvent or it will be it will become insolvent if the debt holders are giving money because they at this at the end of the day they want to get their money back they want a free a, a continuous flow of interest and all so the leverage ratio whether the company is risky or the company is um, going taking a risky route or it is um, i mean uh, um, uh, it, it is the, the what is the risk level of the company that defines the leverage of the company leverage means the balance between your debt and equity so what is a debt equity structure that is your capital structure that is your leverage so by considering the debt as a lever the more and more the debt is and the higher and higher profit you are making so you need to only bear the fixed interest expense and rest is your profit that you are going to enjoy but if you are taking more and more debt your interest burden is huge but then you are not able to convert them into revenues and ultimately to generate profit then <clears throat> this will be a huge burden on you so that means the risk is very high if the debt level is high so the solvency of the company is also tested by the debt holders and the equity holders because now they have gradually not only that the particular company is going to sustain going to just manage the cash in a proper manner they are interested in now they look for it has reached such a position that they can look for the investors of their return on investments whatever investments they have made whether the returns are going to be generated out of that investment now gradually they have started to look for those ratios those return from their investments so those profitability and efficiency ratios that they are more interested in at the survival stage and when the stage is like rapid growth then you know that cash is no more a constraint continuous cash leakages are i mean cash flows are happening from your growing profit because the more and more your profit is growing at a growing rate and the cash is getting released out of that so there is no more liquidity constraint that people will be more uh, concerned about but it is again the solvency whether it is going or growing at the right direction at a right pace and what kind of returns they can expect from that growth so more importance more emphasis is on your leverage ratios and profitability efficiency ratios the less important is now the liquidity okay so you understand that liquidity is coming mainly from your short term short term your operations and your short term management of your short term assets and liabilities that liquidity is coming the leverage is your solvency the structure of your uh, capital how much equity how much debt and profitability and efficiency talks about the return that equity holders are going to get from their investment so these are the three kinds of basic ratios now out of those ratios what exactly you are going to calculate for your interpretation of evaluation and interpretation of the financials of the company that it you do not need to follow any kind of strict rule for that it is up to you that what ratios you will consider <clears throat> so as i said that there can be trend analysis there can be cross section analysis there can be industry comparable analysis now um i'm just discussing those ratios a little but just to let you know for your exam purpose in the next week maybe i will try to keep it only in mcq format but there may be uh, i mean uh, one or two or three short uh, questions also uh, questions means some problems to um, uh, do or maybe some short answer type because i have not done anything theoretical much in this so far whatever classes i have taken uh, so whatever slides i have shared and whatever we have discussed in the class and whatever assignments you have done just revise it once and i think there won't be any problem for answering just one thing i have given you one slides on Uh, i think forms of business organization which i have not i mean because of my uh, i mean sickness i could not take that class i just shared that ppt on forms of organizations 
so you just go through that slides as i told that time also i will uh, again discuss it if required later on if i get time but for the time being you just go through that slide and if question comes very simple question will come that is uh, i mean um, self explanatory from those slides only okay so you go through that slide and um, uh, simple questions will be asked from there it is just to test that whether you have gone through or not no i mean um, complicated question will be coming okay until today whatever uh, we had we have discussed everything will uh, be considered as syllabus for your that first test okay <clears throat> so here one um, uh, company called mcp is um, it's uh, two years data is given you can see two years uh, income statement is given and these are the balance sheets of three years of that company from these only uh, the uh, ratios have been calculated and shown here now, this is the asset side of the balance sheet i am going to share it after the class and these are the liability side of the balance sheet okay so um for the liquidity ratios what we consider liquidity ratios indicate the ability to pay short term liabilities when they come due so by term liquidity only huh, just understand that we all talk about the liquid liquid status of the company liquidity status of the company and we know by now that by liquidity status it is, it is the short term assets huh, how much cash uh, is released how much cash is getting blocked and for long term and for short term liabilities how much cash is pending huh, due those things actually uh, we take together to find out the liquidity position so it it is the ability to pay the short term liabilities because that actually the major threat for the small business and for the startup ventures how to um, run your day to day operations hmm. so what is one the first liquidity ratio is the current ratio it is the current asset by the current liability okay so from balance sheet only you will get the current assets from balance sheet only you will get the current liabilities you just need to do the current asset by current liability here in this particular example you have found that it is average current asset by average current liability what else you can do is the end the end balance of the current asset and end balance of the current liability also you can consider for your current ratio calculation now here why it is average because if you see this particular company is a is in a rapid growth stage okay so since it is a growth stage so the beginning balance and ending balance there might be a huge difference you will find because it is growing so the figures it is not a very small difference you will find over one one year also there may be a huge increase so to comment on the status of liquidity or status of any kind of uh, i mean um, status it is better to go for the average otherwise if you compare it with the last years this years maybe it will give you a wrong picture so what is the average if you compare it with some other company if you do not do the average so that may not be a very clear picture what you are going to get so here your current ratio is showing showing 1.37 what does it mean that even after covering all your current liabilities you have sufficient current assets right it is more than the numerator is more than your current liabilities now whether it is good or bad so it is always good if i have some current asset to pay my immediate liabilities it is good if it is more than one now the point is we need to just check just remember the cash flow statement we just did there if you do the current asset by current liability calculation just for your interest just check that how much it is coming now it is if it is coming say thumb rule is more than one say 1.5 1.4 something like this but if it is coming like 3 4 or something so less is also risky because my current liability is so much that my current assets whatever i have maybe in terms of my cash in terms of my receivables in terms of inventory it cannot be converted into cash so that i can meet up my immediate obligations i need to raise short term loans from outside right less less than one is that's why it is risky but at the same time if it is huge say for example two Three, four. That this. That means what? That means it is not only meeting my immediate liabilities. Even beyond that, a lot of cash I am actually 
either I'm holding a lot of cash, I'm not utilizing it properly. I can, I am not utilizing it to invest further. I'm not in, utilizing it uh, <clears throat> for my, uh, I mean, I'm, or if it is not in terms of cash, if it is in terms of receivables, that, that means my policy is not that I'm able to get those receivables uh, converted into cash quickly, or if it is in terms of inventory, that means I'm not able to convert it into sales, right? So everything you need to look at, what is the source of that huge current asset? So is it that because of huge inventory or huge receivables, just the uh, point what we have found in our last example that we did that we did today. So in that case, maybe also you need to manage your current assets properly. Hmm? So high liquidity is also not good. Low liquidity is also not good. Next comes is the quick ratio or quick asset. What is that? Sum of the cash and receivables. It is excluding the inventory. Since inventory to be converted into cash takes most of the time. Once you are you are building the inventory. Now, whether you are we will be able to sell it or not, that is also not yet decided. With anticipation of some sales level, you are building the inventory. But whether you will be able to sell it or not, that is not yet decided and even if you sell it maybe it is in terms of receivables so releasing cash from that inventory it is a two-step procedure right from inventory to receivables from receivables to cash and that too there are a lot of uncertainty so if there is a huge inventory and because of that your current ratio is high and you are feeling very complacent that is my liquidity position is very good but actually without inventory you are finding that your liquidity is actually very bad then it will be a matter of concern so another ratio which we use is the quick ratio that what is the I mean liquidity position apart from inventory we are having so <clears throat> receivables and cash cash is the hard cash and receivables is easier to be converted into cash sales have already been made it is just the release of cash from that receivables just we are waiting for right so quick ratio so that's why quick ratio even if it is less than one it is not uh, I mean bad because we know that his inventory is also there hmm. it is not that all my liabilities will have to be met up from my uh, receivables and cash only but yes if it is very less so 0.62 is okay it is more than 60 percent but if it is 30 percent or 20 percent and only the entire thing that I am looking for to cover up my liabilities inventory then it is a matter of concern Okay, so segregating the inventory and other uh, current assets, we use the quick ratio. Okay, <clears throat> this conversion period ratios I will be doing um, next time. Another is the leverage ratio. So leverage ratio is what? It is, as I said, the debt equity ratios. One is the total debt to total asset ratio. So out of that total asset, how much is supported by debt? How much is supported by equity? We are going to get these numbers from our balance sheet itself. Here, the balance sheets and income statements are given to you and the ratios are calculated for you. So you will, to understand that, I am just explaining. You just uh, look at those balance sheets and uh, ratios and you take it those items and you just check that whatever is given here you are understanding or not okay it is very simple exercise i'm not going give i'm not giving any assignment for this so debt to assets okay so here also we have considered total debt to total assets so it is it is telling that it is 61 percent something so that means if it is 61 percent some some percentage of debt that means rest is equity so your asset is supported by debt this much and the rest percentage is supported by equity right so now what is the status so far as the leverage is concerned? So there is a balance between equity and debt, but then you need to understand. I mean, at this stage of business, the current level of revenue profits the business has, whether more debt than equity is affordable or not. Now we are assuming that since it is a rapidly growing business and it has raised equity, so whatever further investments it is support, it is making, it is expecting to support it from their debt so it is good since the revenue is increasing profit is increasing so you have a i mean ability to pay the interest and it is going to give you a leverage benefit so maybe it is good equity multiplier is just 
um, and reverse of that what we have done debt to asset ratio is debt by assets and equity multiplier is asset by equity how it is going to help us that we will um, discuss later but it also represents the same thing your leverage position then there is another mention current so out of that total debt now what is your long term debt and what is your current liability that is also an interesting ratio so when we are considering debt debt ratio debt structure all these things so out of the debt is it that the most of the percentage is current liability or mostly it is the outside liability current liability means in your own generated liability payables and all and um, outside liability means you are raising your debt from outside okay so most of the percentage is current liability so higher the current liability the higher is the your uh, liability towards i mean immediate liabilities are more so immediate requirements of cash is more right because long term liabilities you can wait and then you can pay then another thing is your interest coverage ratio so your just income just before your interest huh, divided by the interest so how much that income earnings before interest tax and obviously non cash expenses i will exclude so earnings before interest tax depreciation and amortization huh, how how many times uh, it is to cover up your interest expense so it is uh, 3.2 times earnings than your interest so that means you are in a position to raise your debt it is a very good uh, i mean uh, earnings before interest tax depreciation amortization operating earnings you have so that you can bear the interest expenses a very good interest bearing interest coverage ratio you have so you will be safer if you want to uh, if there is no risk by increasing for increasing your debt level so this is about the leverage ratio i am stopping here i am taking your attendance for profitability ratios you will find gross profit margin net profit margin so those are and return on assets so till that i have already discussed so i am not going to discuss it anymore whatever ratios are going to come in your exam i will only keep those in my slides and then i will circulate let me just have your attendance and then you can leave whoever has class next okay so i have downloaded your attendance you may leave now i think you have understood what are the syllabus till date whatever i have covered whatever slides i will share only those will come and the exam will be next week tuesday from 9 to 10 okay so you may leave now any question uh, ma'am exam will be mcq or some subjective questions ha i just told na it will be mostly mcq huh? but but there may be one or two small problems also that i will see okay i will i will put a notice huh? before um, your exam this week only i think i will put a notice the pattern of exam and the timing both thank you ma'am